by the, the students to practice this art because um, this is basically the, the beginning of typography that the whole experiment is actually happens on paper and if we give the time uh, to this art uh, then we have a chance to develop new forms um, I asked myself why in Japan uh, calligraphy is always practiced in a large forms in the East, it's, it's a part of a lifestyle and it's as natural as drinking tea or, uh, uh, or doing anything else. Um, I once saw a performance by uh, little children during some street festival in Japan and uh, uh, they were just mind-blowing, beautiful. Without, it looks so effortless to me and uh, I, would, I would really like to see someday Armenian kids do the same to take a brush and just effortlessly draw beautiful Armenian letters. Um, so if we look at the East, we see that calligraphy is uh, is inseparable part of, uh, of culture. If we look at the West, we see also uh, a, a long tradition of uh, writing uh, beautiful letter shapes, which basically serve as a cultural base for the contemporary typography. Uh, that we see and use every day. Uh, so I started my search because I realized that I really need to find material. And at, at that time I was living in Israel, so the first thing I did, I went to Jerusalem and uh, to the Gulbenkian Library uh, in Armenian quarter. Um, but they only had printed books, and to my surprise, they never really allow anybody to study the, the manuscripts that they have. And they have a big, big collection of uh, Armenian manuscripts in Jerusalem. But it was not accessible to me, so I realized that the only way that they can really find the material I'm looking for, I need to come here. So in 2010, I packed my bags and um, moved back. Um, the first thing I did, of course, I went to Mount Another. Um, but to my surprise, most of the material uh, is not there. Most of the material is actually in uh, spread among quite a few museums and, uh, and libraries. And if you go and search for it, you will find it. Um, the source of it all, briefly said, is uh, the Armenian uh, congregation in Vienna and Venice. They were actually the pioneers of the calligraphy and typography and Armenian typography. So everything that is basically printed is of course drawn by hand first. So uh, whatever you see here, uh, of course, is uh, this is uh, probably uh, carved on metal and printed, but before that was drawn by hand. So we can call this calligraphy. Of course, it's a little bit of a letter setting as well. and Because uh, um, you see the, the letters are not drawn with just one long stroke. Uh, they're actually much more complex. Um, one big source of the books on Armenian calligraphy is uh, Literature and Art Museum in Yerevan. It's a little, very cozy place that is on the back side of the National Gallery and almost nobody notices that there is actually a museum there that houses most of the correspondence of the Armenian famous writers and poets and, uh, and also painters and artists. So uh, to my surprise I found quite a few books on Armenian calligraphy there. Um, uh, and you'll be amazed. I mean, look at how many, at this, at, until this point, I managed to find, and look at the geography. I mean, Moscow, Venice, Vienna, Tiflis, Leipzig, and of course, Constantinople, because uh, of the large Armenian community that was there. Um, one book really, really drew my attention, and it's this one. This book, which was published in 1834 in uh, in uh, Venice, it's the only book that actually had text in it because everything else that I saw was just illustrations. But this book had a text, and it was in classical Armenian, so I really wanted to find 
what it actually said. Um, I asked a friend of mine to translate it, and uh, the funny thing is that the first paragraph, and this uh, this guy who actually made this book was a monk in uh, in Armenian monastery in Saint Lazarus, <laughs> and the first paragraph actually talks about how important it, it was for him personally to develop beautiful Armenian letters because everyone else is actually doing it without paying much attention. It doesn't look good, it doesn't look professional. So he, he said to himself that he, he has to set on a task of actually creating beautiful Armenian letters and uh, that's what this book is about. It also has uh, quite useful instructions on how to uh, practice uh, the art, how to practice the direction of the strokes. And uh, uh, actually there is only one page that is missing and it's in Venice and for me to be able to write a complete com uh, commentary on this volume I really need that one page so if you have any friends in uh, Venice please help me out so I need just one page that is missing. Um, another book that actually really really surprised me was uh, this one that I marked in a black because once I saw the author, it kind of struck me like a lightning. I saw Lusignan, so I said to myself, my God, and he called himself, himself Bay, Bay Lusignan. Uh, of course, to everyone who is familiar with Armenian history knows that Lusignan family is, the, of course, you know, who were there. It's the Kilikan Kingdom and uh, the French and Armenian kind of royal houses. Um, he, he is actually, his real name is Ambrosius and uh, he, was, uh, he was French, Armenian, uh, but he believes that he's the descendant of the Lusignan fam family. So he started to, he printed quite a few editions of a very beautiful Armenian calligraphy book. You see a few close-ups here. Uh, it's a fantastic work. It's very tiny, but it's very, very, very interesting. And you can see it because it's in a national library, uh, in a rare book section. So if you take the time and go and, uh, and visit the library, you will see this book. Um, what's also interesting is that uh, Mahitaris knew that Armenian letters need to populate the same space with other languages. So basically, they made sure that whatever Armenian types they were designing, they would go along. French, German, English, or or any other language in Europe. So basically, the aesthetics of the letters that uh, that they prepared were were really, really in a European fashion, European style.